Hi everybody, I'm going to try this again. Um, this will be my third or fourth attempt to try to download this part of Marshall Chat. Um, I was talking about being too dangerous for competing or UFC or whatever they want to call it. There's a lot of people on keyboards that go out there and they say how dangerous they are. They're just, they're just too dangerous or the techniques they learn are just too deadly for them to, uh, you, they're just too dangerous, they're too deadly to do in UFC. I got a, I got a true and a false statement on that. The, the false part of that is people who normally typically are saying that, are they're just afraid of competition. They're too afraid of it. And even, maybe in, in some sense, you know, I, as I think about it though, there's some people out there though, they really honestly believe that everything they have, it's just, it's just too dangerous, because they're either learning something like Krav Maga, or they're learning uh, Kapop or uh, Hagana, or or any or something or close quarters combatives, um, things like that that they believe are just too dangerous. And it's not so much that the things themselves are too dangerous, the arts themselves are too dangerous. What it is is the mindset that they have is too dangerous for comp competition because they're not training for competition it's how you train it's what you're gonna do um, so there are some people out there that just think they are too deadly and in reality they're not I mean give me a break I, I really just if you have a training partner that person's obviously not dead and unless you're killing people every time you have to defend yourself um, you're just a mass murderer and you're not really defending yourself give me a break okay um, and I'll go into that in a little bit, but in the other other side is there are some arts that are not designed to go into a cage per se, and be limited so much by rules. There is a gigantic list of rules for MMA, uh, a big big list, and a lot of things that will help you in a fight or help you survive a confrontation is proper targets and some of these targets are vital areas these vital areas are not just for knockouts these are for complete injury and incapacitating your opponent very quickly but it's not just that it's it's not just like for the knockout or a takedown or something it's to cause heavy trauma to the body where when they land the person's hurt um not just not just knocked out not just a tko not just you know they're damaged okay and then if you then you add in uh, heart you know then you add in not just that but you add in intent your mindset about what you're doing totally different things you're learning can you add it into MMA as far as the training concerned because MMA now we all know MMA is a coin phrase they use for things that you see in the cage which a lot of it is uh, Muay Thai style kickboxing. I'm not saying Muay Thai kickboxing because it's Muay Thai style, which means knees, elbows, um, and stuff like that. But you still aren't even doing headbutts or anything like that that comes with Muay Brawn, Muay Thai. Um, so these style of kicks, uh, these style of knees and uh, elbows, spinning back fist, things like that. Um, but you're also using uh, grappling and that this is the encompassing word of MMA now mixed martial arts as far as the term is concerned in my opinion isn't being totally exposed in the UFC and the reason why I say that is because they only focus on the level or rank of a guy's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu how good of a wrestler they are if he's got really good hands, those are quotes, good hands, um, or anything like that. The only one that is, there's certain ones in there that other people have noted as doing other martial arts styles, like Leota Machida, who is a Shotokan guy, but he doesn't back away from it. Matter of fact, he likes to promote Shotokan. Uh, Shotokan karate, he tries to promote it. Um, people don't realize that Anderson Silva, he does a bunch of different things in there that other people just don't do and it's because of how much training he does um, some guys just in there they're just brutes they're not they're, the reason why they're successful is because 
they can impose their will upon anybody who walks in there. That's really impressive. Um, but I don't see a lot of... There, there's not very many guys in there that I see with a whole lot of technical prowess, though. Um, I just don't see it. If I watch a kickboxing match with a guy that's been in uh, kickboxing karate or taekwondo or something, and I watch them in a kickboxing match, it's amazing how they are so good in that arena because they are, they're showing off a skill set that they've really honed and really practiced. But a lot of these guys can't seem to transfer to MMA, which drives me crazy. And then, of course, you know, there's always that debate of are you too dangerous because you practice certain arts. I don't believe so. I believe you could always fine-tune it if you needed to to make sure you're not killing or dismantling your opponent. Um, for fact, I know you can have great self-control. You can do this for demos. You do this for sparring when you're in the school against it and against your other opponents. You're not destroying each other on a daily basis. So you're not killing the guy that you're training with. So I'm guaranteeing you have enough self-control. Because this is another thing martial arts teaches you. Self-control, self-discipline. These are two factors that you need to be able to control what you're doing. Ed Parker said about, uh, he was talking about this during that perfect weapon thing with uh, Speakman, uh, Jeff Speakman. He said, Jeff can control his punch. He can touch you with it or he can go through you and crush you with it. And he, and he said, and that's a very sense of control. He goes, he can even stop before he hits you. And that's a sense of control, not pulling your punch. It's control. And this is true. There is a difference between pulling your punch and controlling. Uh, controlling how you hit. Pulling your punch is constantly never hitting all the way through, and you're always jerking back to not want to hit somebody because you're just too timid. Now, me going and stopping right before I hit you and coming and retracting it back, that's me controlling when, how quickly, and I will get right up to you right before I retract. I can do it. I've been doing it for, I, I can control myself. But also what I know is I take that control and I snap all the way through. I know my range. I know exactly where to go. If I hit you, I know I can go through that entire thing before I retract. I know I can hit you hard. I've hit people hard. I've knocked people unconscious. I've broken people's jaws. But it's through that same control. Like, am I going to dis dismantle this person? Or am I going to spar this person who I just pop? And I've done that before. So, there is a level of self-control and uh, self-discipline that you need to be able to accomplish that kind of goal but people are saying they're too dangerous to do it i that to me says you have no self-control but in the same regard now let's get away from that side of it in the same regard there are people out there who do not train their mindset to be competitive people who train in kali they don't train for just a competition they're training for destroying it's a weapon system. So they train for weapons. They train to disarm. They train to maim and hurt. And they, they train differently because of the fact that it, this whole system is designed differently than, say, kickboxing or boxing. And even now, MMA, it's designed differently. Your mindset's differently. Your, your whole attitude of what you're going in for is different. That's where people say it's... It's gonna be kill, and you know, even Boss Rutten is funny. People have talked about how Keto isn't an MMA, and he had some slight things. He didn't really dog it, but he said there are good things from it, but you can't see it in MMA um, because it's there's probably there are probably are good takedowns stuff like that, but it's not designed for that. And a lot of times, what's funny is he, I, I like his response on that. Okay. I really do like his response on that because beforehand, you know, you hear people say negative things about like Aikido or Aikido Jiu Jitsu. But there's another point that people don't understand because there's so much garbage out there. And there's garbage in the MMA world as far as gyms. And there's garbage out there for the guys who are trying to learn traditional martial arts. If you have a crap teacher who doesn't understand 
anything that they're doing, then you're going to get this totally trashed system. And then you're out there representing this art that's really not that art necessarily. So the thing is about uh, like Aikido, I, I wish I would have been able to have my friend Arthur Levine on here because he talked about this before and I kept losing it and, and YouTube kept de de destroying my video. So hopefully this will go through. But he had, they start out with a Temi. All Aikido and uh, Aki Jutsu, if you're teaching a good Aki Jiu Jitsu or uh, Aikido or you're learning one, it should all start with a Temi. And a Temi is striking. Now, a strike isn't, a Temi is not just a strike. It's not just like a, I slapped you in your face. It's not a strike. It's a critical strike. It is a devastating blow. It's me knuckling you in the side of your eye or right into the temple of your head. It's me coming underneath and jamming your throat. It's me hitting your neck, boom, on the side of your neck. These are illegal moves. Rule number 11, these are illegal in MMA. Okay? Going for this. Why? Because we are connecting energy and we're moving into this, so I now control your flow of energy. There's a whole lot of explanation to it. There's a lot that gets into Aikido that a lot of people do not understand. Okay. Fact of the most matter is, you also don't, you can't do single digit, uh, single digit type of holds, which honestly, Aiki Jiu Jitsu, I know for a fact, has a lot of single digit holds. You can't do that. You can grab, I think, anywhere from three to four fingers, but you can't even do that really. You can't grab a thumb and pull it back, which honestly, if I wanted to get someone off of me and they start doing this and I grab their thumb and pull it and I snap that thumb back, it's going to do it. Your, hand, your wrists are wrapped. You're not going to get a solid wrist lock with a wrapped up wrist for, let's say, boxing or MMA because it's just that's what it's there for. It's to hold that wrist in place. Okay, so you're not breaking your wrist. Which shows me, again, people aren't learning how to punch properly anyway because just because you don't tape your wrist does not mean you're going to break your wrist. We'll get into that later. But at the same time, so it's just not designed for that. Judo was designed for competition. It was made for that. That's why the belt system even came around. It was designed for competition. There are parts and aspects of judo, of some judo out there. Not all judo. Some judo out there, some of the older judo in jiu-jitsu, this stuff was made to spike, the throw was to spike the head onto the ground. It was to grab the person's leg and dislocate on throw. And even though they're probably being told this in class, they're not really practicing it in class. So it's easier for them to transfer this into competition because they're giving you this mindset of this is where it is from, okay? So we're talking about doing all these things. You know, boxing. Boxing had rules from the get-go. Now, they have improved and changed. I mean, they can't wear spikes anymore and stuff like that. There are certain things that they've done. I mean, it's, there's some big type of weird, crazy rules as well for them too from Queensberry rules man it's some of that stuff's crazy to read but and arthur put that up too it was, it just was pretty fantastic but the fact is is people aren't training if you're training for competition and training for sport you're training for rules and stuff like that which is fine and the reason why i say that's fine is because if you're training that it means you really are going technique versus technique with this person you're versus okay it's just me and this guy and we both train the same way. Now it's to see who is the better one on this. And that's how all fights really come down to. It's just who the, who, which guy is better at that moment. It's always about the moment, never about, you know, it's never really about any more than just that moment and, you know, who's better between you and me at that moment. Okay? But that means you train hard for that. But you're training for referee breakups, time limits, uh, not, uh, you're not training for concrete floors and uh, needles on the ground or interference from other people and friends and you're not training for the weapon to come and be deployed you're not w training for the guy to kick you in the groin not just you kicking the groin but him kicking you or kneeing you in the groin him sticking his fingers in your eyes him biting you um and what I, what's funny is people say they give me a hard time say well we could do that too we're at MMA guys and i say yeah but then you watch the people getting poked in the eye people getting kicked in the groin in mma or how they react even in boxing when Mike Tyson bit Holy, <laughs> Evander Holyfield's ear and uh, how everyone reacted, reacted like 
God, jeez. Or they get poked in the eye, a little, little poke. And they're like, oh, oh, oh. Okay? And there's some are genuine fighters. Though. I've seen people take a poke in the eye in, like, the, I think some of the female fighters I've seen get poked in the eye, and they just go, Ugh. And it's watering like crazy, and it's, it's affecting them to be able to advance and do something offensive. But they're still fighting. And they didn't whine about it, man. They, they, they nut up more than men do. Sorry, it's a fact, man. They, they just have, they, they just seem to have a more of a bigger testicular fortitude at times. I've seen guys just double over and act so crazy. Oh, I didn't, I got hit in the eye. Oh, you hit my testes. See, and, and what I try to tell people is you have to train for them to fight dirty along with you. It's not just you being able to fight dirty. Your opponent can fight dirty in the street. Can you take a shot into the junk and still be able to fight? Can you take a poke to the eye and still be able to fight? Can you get your hand, can you try to avoid these things? Do you know how to block these things? Do you know how to keep this person in check? You know, that's not something that's relevant in a, comp in a competitive way. So there are certain mindsets and differences in training. So do I think there are people out there that train specifically and they are too dangerous for a sport? Yes. Do I think that there are people, more people out there that are just saying that because they don't want to actually get in a fight and get laid out? Absolutely. Um, but you know what? You guys give me some comments. Thanks for watching a lot of these guys. I know there's not a lot, but I don't care. But whoever is watching, post comments below. Give me some questions, insights. Go to Facebook. Um, I'm going to leave my links down there uh, in the comment section. and stuff. I'm going to leave it below. Hook it up. I want some questions asked, stuff like that. What should I have the next topic about? Okay. I'm just, hopefully this one will load. So I'll talk to you guys later next time. Let's see if we can keep this going.